قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد Last week we had commenced with a topic of how the social media electronic media has given an opportunity for many people to become celebrity sheikhs and we spoke a little bit about that and we did not come to a conclusion of that discussion and I would like to continue with that discussion that this platform the electronic media social media has given people an opportunity to become a celebrity a celebrity sheikh where we post so many issues and we take pride about people following us and there is this the time and desire to be a celebrity sheikh we need to be very careful and reflect on our intentions and we also need to consider how to stop being a celebrity sheikh and have so many followers fan boys fan girls but rather make an effort in building real relationships with people we see random inspirational islamic video on youtube a random brother or sister now feels that the set speaker on the youtube video is the solution to all their life problems we find the facebook fan page of a set speaker and we now feel compelled to comment on every single one of the statuses and it's amazing that you know we either love it or hate it celebrity speaker culture is here and the social media is playing a major role in promoting this culture now it's time to take and time to talk from the perspective of how we view and approach islamic speakers social media has created a world where people become quickly popular but also where approaching them is easier than ever you may hear a talk that changes your life alhamdulillah and you can now just fire off a tweet at that person to thank them You know there was a book that talks about traps to avoid when meeting a mentor specifically an entrepreneurial mentor and I've adapted that and those traps with social media I've adapted these traps for our context from this book Now before continuing it is important to understand what is happening beneath the surface when someone influences you particularly in helping you come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these mediums there is a natural inclination to want to connect with them that's natural there is this inclination to build a relationship with them There is this natural inclination to seek advice from them and even take mentorship from them. You may experience that when you finally get to meet a sheikh, a scholar after being a student of his book or his lectures over some time and yes you get a giddy particular sensation. You are unable to control your emotions when you finally get to meet him. but it's important to understand the boundaries so that we can create healthy 
and productive interaction, whether online or offline. With that, there are legitimate ways to connecting with someone and building a relationship with them, no matter how busy and famous they are. On the other hand, there are ways to be completely creepy and weird. Example, people will tweet, Oh my God, you are the best. This is not the wisest way to begin correspondence with someone. There is nothing wrong with thanking someone for how they have impacted you. But don't keep gushing thank them for how they impacted you. Don't thank them for being awesome. Thank them for being of how they impacted you, but not for being awesome. Thank them for how they impacted you. Don't thank them for being awesome. If you keep emailing someone and start each email with something like, Subhanallah, Sheikh, you are so gifted. It will get awkward and uncomfortable. A better approach if reaching out, a better approach if reaching out to someone is saying something like, Jazakallah khair for your talk about so and so. I never thought about the revelation of Surah Iqra in this manner. And it has really changed the way I approach, etc. Make the content of the talk the focus and not the person himself. False humility. This is one of you know, the biggest peeves. You know, we need to get a grip. Some of these shares, they are human too. And we need to act as if they are human. Treat them like normal people. Don't be a victim of personality worship. This doesn't mean you need not be arrogant. This doesn't mean that you need to be arrogant and talk down to them. Just be normal. Unfortunately, being normal today is a great challenge for both the sheikhs and their followers. Be respectful of a person's time. Be respectful of a person's position. Be respectful of a person's piety. But also have, the, also have some dignity. And an easy way to do this is to try to anticipate their answers and be succinct with something only they can answer for. For example, that only they are able to solve all my problems. Just because someone gives a great talk on repentance does not mean they can give normal marital counseling or career advice or tell you what to major in or talk to your kids for three minutes and then turn them into angels. A huge downside of this celebrity persona is the assumption that just because someone is famous or is able to garner 50,000 hits on a YouTube video, that they are suddenly able to solve all problems, people will come down to an imam and ask something like, a person in our community just got arrested. Can you counsel him? And the Imam will say something like, mm, you know, you need a social worker. And they will say, but no, we want you to do it. You are so amazing. We saw you on YouTube or heard your talk. You know so much about Islam. We need to understand that if a person is able to give a good talk, doesn't mean he's a so person that is able to give social advice. The status of celebrity makes people infatuated with seeking solace only in that. Don't let your love for someone and don't let your love for someone more well-known cause you to undervalue those that are near you. I contend that the greatest casualty in the YouTube social media age is the local Imam. Think about the current mentors in your life. Did you like and trust them immediately? Or did your relationship grow with time and work and mutual support? Sometimes 
in your desire to learn as much as you can from people you admire, you ask them for specific support. You ask them for some guidance without having any consideration for their time, their ability, their respect. Respect your own time and that of busy people. Mentors grow naturally. They are not manufactured. Now, social networking and social networking enables us to connect quickly. But that can easily fool us into thinking we are building a relationship. Can you imagine someone going, uh, going up to Qari Abdul Basit after he had given a beautiful recitation and saying, I loved your recitation. Do you have a few minutes? I did like to recite the entire Quran to you so you can correct my tajweed and beautify my voice. You know, it's ridiculous. But people do exactly this via email, Twitter, Facebook, comments to Islamic speakers on a daily basis. There is responsibility from those that are linked and those that consume these YouTube videos. And there is also a requirement of responsibility from those sheikhs, scholars that put out these messages and posts, etc., that on both sides there must be a correct balance and act with responsibility and maturity. Stay tuned, inshallah, when we get back, we will continue with this discussion. طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Before the break we were speaking of responsibility on both the side of the so-called celebrity sheikh and the people that are following them that there is a need to act responsibly. Now the dark side that we need to watch out for is the day that the celebrity imam does or says something that random Muslim person doesn't agree with. You might have the sheikh who might say something that one day a random person may not agree with. They will become the most hated pariah faster than you can break your own wudu. People today swing wildly from loving someone to hating them. And then loving them again and then hating them again. This is easiest way to be perceived as unstable and crazy. If someone does something you don't agree with. You don't need to crucify them online. Let them know with a little bit of menace, with a little bit of responsibility, why you are upset and how what they said may have affected you. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. But unfortunately, this brings about the aspect whereby Without taking responsibility, we will use the same social media platform to criticize and bring down the person who has made a mistake. Again, the responsibility of responding. Remember we spoke about Al-Tha'tharun that Rasulullah spoke of in a hadith when he was asked, who are these people? And he said, these are people that would want to have an opinion about everything, an opinion about everybody, an opinion about every group, an opinion about everything. You just want to have an opinion. And most of the times your opinions are unqualified. Most of the times your opinions are biased. Most of the times your opinions are out of misrepresentation, misinformation comes back to the circle of the obsession of putting out things on the social media. 
Alhamdulillah, this has actually brought us towards the end of our discussion on social media. And we've ended it with perhaps a very contentious topic. And that is the aspect of celebrity sheikhs. We also spoke about the responsibility of the sheikh himself to post responsibly. We also spoke about those that are being consuming from these particular YouTubes and e electronic media that we also need to be acting responsibly and we need to keep place and people in their correct positions and just regard everything around us as normal. These are also people that are normal human beings. And if they do some wrong, accept. Do not, do not use the same platform to crucify these people. And this brought about an end of our discussion. And in the next episode following today, I would like to conclude our discussion with some ahadith of our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you recall in the beginning, right in the beginning of our discussion, we had spoken of how this deen of ours and the guidance that we achieve or obtain in this deen of ours, which is the quran -i kareem and the prophetic traditions of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are so transient that they address even the most complicated and they even address the most modern forms of technology that we are faced with in the 21st century. And if you recall, we also spoke about some ahadith that relates to this platform, electronic media. And in today, in continuing our discussion today, I would like us to start discussing some ahadith. And we may discuss, inshallah, around 40 ahadith today and in the ensuing episodes from which we will learn how the beautiful ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed this topic. Some of the ahadith may have been already discussed in our previous discussions, but I'm sure it will not be void of benefit. And the first one, which is very strongly related to what we have just concluded about celebrity sheikhs and the way we react and respond to them, is the hadith about intentions. And that's the first hadith that we are going to talk of. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, actions are judged by their intentions. So each man will have what he intended. Therefore, he whose migration was to Allah and his messenger, his migration is to Allah and his messenger. But he whose migration was for some worldly benefit or for a wife he might marry, his migration is to that for which he migrated. Intention is at the core of any action. And social media is no exception. It is famously said that the intention should be checked before a deed, while performing a deed, and after the deed. We must assess why we are sharing something or posting a particular status, a particular update. What is the underlying message we are trying to convey? Who are we really writing it for? What do we actually hope? The response, the, and what actual response are we hoping for? If you don't have anything good to say, and this is the second hadith. The first one was about intention. The second hadith, also from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you don't have anything good to say, Rasulullah has said, he who believes in Allah and the last day must either speak good or remain silent. This is a hadith reported in Sahih Muslim. And this is a foundational principle for social media. It is hard, it is difficult, 
because the entire purpose of social media is sharing and discussion. We often come to regret things we post, realizing too late that silence would have been better, that silence would have better served us. Remember these ahadith. We are going to go through these ahadith. Just give you the hadith and just give a very brief explanation of the hadith. Remember the foundational principle silence is better. A third hadith mind your own business. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said in another hadith. From the excellence of a person's Islam is that he leaves what he does not concern. From the excellence of a person's Islam is that he leaves that does not concern him. This is a hadith narrated in Tirmidhi. You'll naturally come across lots of things that don't concern you, but looks interesting. The trick is to keep yourself from getting involved in them. Cutting down on your overall consumption of information. A fourth hadith. A rule for all civilizations. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, None of you truly believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. A hadith of Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The simplicity of this advice sometimes causes us to underestimate its magnitude. Rasulullah said, From the excellence of a person's belief is that he loves for himself what he loves for his brother. And the simplicity of this advice sometimes causes us to underestimate its magnitude. Treat others how you would want to be treated in all online interactions. Not sure how to handle a certain email, not sure how to handle a certain text or a message, use this rule. This is also a reminder to subdue our own ego. Do not let the seemingly selfish nature of social media delude you. Do your best to constantly think of others and empathize with them. We'll do one more hadith for today. Rasulullah has also said on the topic, you are what you feed. The example of good company and that of bad company is that of an owner of musk and of iron. The hadith, the example of good company and that of bad company is that of an owner of musk and an iron smith. The owner of musk would either offer you a free sample or you would buy it from him or you would smell its pleasant odor. But as for the iron smith, he would either burn your clothes or you have to smell its unpleasant odor. A hadith of Muslim. Its relation to social media is we check our feed, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, email, text, WhatsApp, etc. Dozens of times a day, we mindlessly pull out our phones and check the feed while eating waiting in line, using the restroom, at the red light, at the traffic light, even while driving, your feed is what you voluntarily allow into your personal space. It has an effect on you. Be vigilant about protecting your environment and who you are following and who you are allowing to influence you. We've concluded our discussion today with five ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Reflect on these ahadith that we have just spoken of and how it impacts our interaction on social media. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري